Hey everybody, it's Jennifer. Happy Monday. Hope you're ready for a great week. And this week I wanted to talk about something that a lot of agents struggle with. And honestly, if it's something you can get good at, those are the agents that you see have huge success. And that is everybody wants the easy route. Everybody wants like the low hanging fruit. And I don't guess maybe that's not just specific to our industry, but I want to talk today about leads and the trouble, why so many agents have a lot of trouble converting leads into clients. And it's because not every lead that calls you is ready to go look at properties that day, is ready to buy a home or sell a home in the next 30 days. A small percentage, you know, occasionally you'll get lucky and you'll get one of those, but the majority of leads are going to have some obstacle or some hurdle you are going to have to get past in order to eventually convert them to a client. And so today, I wanted to talk through some of just the most common objections that I think we as agents get as leads. And that can be whether you're running ads on Facebook or social media, um, you know, through your CRM, you're getting leads that way. These could be leads from an open house. These can be leads from property time. You know, these are people that are coming in. You don't necessarily have a relationship with them. They're probably talking to, you know, 15 different agents. And how are you going to be the one that's going to convert them into a client? And the first one is when leads just want the property information. If you get a call, you know, maybe your listing or another listing while you're working property time and they just want the information about the house and that's it. And I feel like I can teach this one because I remember when I was a new agent, I was terrible about, you know, people call and ask about a house. I'd say, oh, it's four bedrooms and it's this price. And they'd be like, okay, thanks. And I'd be like, have a great day. You know, it took me a while to learn that the whole reason, the whole point of me being there is to try to convert those people into a client. So when you get somebody who only wants property information, you have to start asking questions. So, you know, you tell them the price, is that in the price range that you're looking for? Or would you like for me to send you some other things that are available in this neighborhood? How soon are you looking to move? Do you, how many bedrooms do you need? This one has a pool. Do you need a home with a pool? Or would you be open to homes that don't have pools? When you start asking questions and probing, then you can get them talking. And once you've got them talking about what they're looking for, then you can let them know, well, hey, I can send you something that fits that criteria, or I can set you up so you get a notification the minute some Something hits the market or I can search things that are coming soon to see if there's a property coming up that hasn't hit the market yet what's a good email and phone number you know for me to reach back out to you at start talk asking questions instead of just giving information and you can start to get somewhere with those leads who just want the information and act like they want to get right off the phone the second one I wrote them down here so don't forget oh when the home is already under contract this happens a lot where we get inquiries and the home they're interested in has already gone pending. You don't want to tell them that that home is under contract via text or via email because you will likely never hear from them again. So try to have that conversation on the phone. Uh, pick up the phone and say, hey, I wanted to give you a call because I saw you were interested in this property and I wanted to let you know it just went under contract, but there's three others that are available. Can I send these over to you? You know, something that will, again, start that conversation because if you just tell them, sorry, this home is gone and especially if you just do it via text or email or somewhere where they don't really have to respond to you you will probably never hear from them again so definitely try to pick up the phone and call those leads they call in a house that's already gone under contract um, sometimes you get ones that aren't ready to talk to an agent yet actually this is something you know my team has been doing recently is learning that People aren't ready to talk to an agent until they're ready to talk to an agent. And that doesn't mean that we want to leave them alone or not stay in front of them. Actually, now one of the first things we ask them when we get an internet lead or something like that is, hey, did you want to chat with us or do you just want to browse the website? Because then we can customize our follow-up in a way that's appropriate for them. If there's somebody who is 12 months out from buying and they just want to kind of start looking, they don't want to be hassled, they don't want to be pressured, then we say, awesome, browse away if you have any questions, you know, and then we maybe follow up with them once a month or so just to say, hey, are you finding everything okay? You know, any questions we can answer for you? So our follow-up then is a lot more um, laid back and no pressure. As opposed to when they say, yeah, actually I have a question. Um, then we pick up the phone and we give them a call right then. You know, that's a lead who wants to talk to us. And I mean, the best example I can think of, think of when it comes to this is people hate to talk to technology when they want to speak to a person and people hate talking to people when they just want to use technology. So think about the times when you've been on the phone with like one of those automated systems and you're just yelling representative into the phone because you want to speak to somebody. If you don't want to speak to somebody, I love online chat bots and things like that where I can just type in a question. I don't 
don't want to talk to you on the phone. You know, I just want to have an answer to this one thing. So ask them up front. And if they say they're not really ready to talk to an agent yet, awesome. We're not here to hassle you or pressure you. Just feel free to take a look at our website, you know, set them up for some e-alerts so they're getting properties from you. That's keeping your face in front of them and they're gonna grow to trust you over time and you're not gonna push them away because you're pushing too hard. Um, the other one is when we get a call and they just wanna lease. And so many agents are so quick to let those lease clients go. Don't be. Those lease clients can turn into buyers and sellers and refer friends to you down the road. It is worth taking a little bit of time with them to help them with that lease property while also saying, well, is your goal to eventually buy a house? You know, I'm helping you look at houses for rent right now, but do you eventually want to buy? Most of the time, yes. Almost everyone's goal is to eventually own a home. You can start them down that path. Say, awesome. Well, while you're in this house for the next 12 months, you know, I'm going to send you some updates every once a month. I can give you information for lenders. So you can kind of maybe start working on your credit or so you know how much you need to start saving to put away. Let's get you put on that path. So one day when this lease is up, you can turn around and buy a home instead of having to lease again. So so don't just turn them away because they lease. You know, there's a lot of good clients to be had that started off leasing and either sometimes they even convert to buyers right then when they realize what, that they can afford to buy a house. So don't let those leases go by without trying to work them, put them in your system, help them, guide them. Sometimes those will be your best referral partners because a lot of agents do turn them away because they just want to lease. They'll be really appreciative that you took the time to help them. And then one of the last ones is non-responsive leads. Uh, I have said this in so many videos before, silence is not a no. Just because they are not answering you doesn't mean that they are never going to work for you, work with you. doesn't mean that they're never going to buy a house. doesn't mean that they're already working with somebody else. It just means they are not ready to reach out to you just yet. And we've talked before about the furniture store example, where, you know, when you go into a furniture store and all those salespeople run up to you, what do you say? You say, no, no thanks, I'm just looking. And you go browse because you don't want to be hassled or pressured. And the minute you find what you want to buy, you go get one of those salespeople. It's the same way. You know, they want to look online. They want to browse. They want to wait until they're comfortable. And the minute that they want to go see a home, they're going to need to call a realtor. And if you're the one who has stayed in touch with them, they're going to call you. So the best, best plan for these leads is kind of a multi-touch approach. You know, sometimes call them, sometimes text, sometimes email, sometimes um, shoot them a video, maybe just kind of educating them on the market or, you know, why they need a pre-approval letter or anything like that. And set it up. These are where you really want to use those automated drip campaigns. You know, this is where your CRM really comes into play. I could give you multiple examples of us just in the last month where people have replied back um, that I hadn't heard from in, you know, six months to a year, and they're replying back to an automated email or text that went out to them that I didn't even do, that they just replied back to. And then we were able to, you know, start that conversation again and be able to convert them into clients. So don't just let them go just because you're not hearing anything. Until they tell you, stop calling me, don't stop calling them. You know, email, text, set up a nice campaign for yourself where they're getting something from you, you know, every few weeks, change it up. Sometimes a text, sometimes an email, sometimes a phone call, uh, and just keep doing that. Eventually when they are ready to buy, they will give you a call. And then the last one, I like to call it lead fatigue. You know, sometimes you're just making calls every week, you know, and you're reaching out to people and you just don't feel like you're getting anywhere. And you know, it can get, you know, it can burn you out a little bit. Just know that if you stick with it, and you keep following up with these leads, you keep asking questions, you keep trying to customize how you how you stay in touch with them after that initial reaction, it will start to pay off. And you might go sometimes weeks and weeks where you just don't get anybody, and then all of a sudden, leads that you've been working for the last six to 12 months, will start, your phone will start ringing because they're ready, their time is right. You can't change their timing, so they're gonna reach out to you. So hopefully that helps you with all the leads that you were getting. I hope you were doing things, A, to generate leads, We'll talk about that in another video, but that's a little just advice to help you get past those common stumbling blocks or things that agents usually say, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to mess with that lead, and they let it go. And agents who will follow up are the ones who end up getting that business. I hope you have a great week. As always, if you have any topics you'd like for us to cover or go over, just reply back to this email, and I will see you next Monday. Bye.